Your Amazing Milk, the evidence-based podcast about breast milk from a dealer for you. Maybe your life has just turned upside down because you've had a baby and you have lots of questions. Or you've heard that breastfeeding is good for babies and you just want to know more about it. I'm Katie and in each episode, I talk about the processes going on in a woman's body, about the composition of breast milk and its effects, as well as tackling those myths and facts. Amazing, fascinating, and all backed up by science. In this episode, is it true that a longer breastfeeding period also benefits the mother? Why are milk teeth called milk teeth? How long does it, in fact, take for a baby's brain to double in size? And what does breast milk have to do with cancer research? Hello and welcome back to episode number six. So much has already happened. By this stage, the whole family has learned and developed so much and in so many ways. What happens after the first six months of life? Around now, your baby may be getting his first tooth as he starts to eat solids. But that doesn't mean he's ready to stop breastfeeding. The World Health Organization recommends continued breastfeeding along with complementary foods for up to two years or beyond. In fact, that's why a child's first teeth are known as milk teeth, because the evolutionary age of weaning ranged up to seven years, which coincides with the time when children start to lose their first teeth. In the past, there were good reasons why breastfeeding should continue for that long. By analysing infant bones dug up at the site of an abandoned medieval English village, archaeologists found that even with a malnourished population and dirty water, the children who lived there grew and thrived at much the same rate as children in the UK today, as long as they were being breastfed. Once breastfeeding stopped, commonly at around 18 months, their growth slowed and many became ill. Breast milk had protected them. Nowadays, extended breastfeeding continues to protect our long-term health and there's a host of studies to prove it. While your baby needs to start eating solids after six months to help him build up stores of nutrients such as iron, zinc and vitamins B and D, these foods should complement rather than replace your milk. Even though he's starting to join in family meals, your baby will continue to get most of his nutrition from your milk for a long time to come. At seven months old, 93% of his calories come from your milk. And between 11 and 16 months, milk will still provide around half of his daily calorie intake. No matter where you live or how rich or poor you are, Breastfeeding for longer will continue to help protect your baby against lower respiratory tract infections, ear infections, diarrhoea, type 1 diabetes and obesity. Breastfeeding for more than six months has even been shown to be protective against cancers such as acute lymphocytic leukaemia and Hodgkin's lymphoma. However, Breastfeeding beyond six months doesn't mean nursing 10 or 12 times a day like it did when your baby was tiny. You can choose how to fit it in with your lifestyle and how long you continue. For many mums, that means a cuddly breastfeeding session at bedtime and again first thing in the morning or straight after work. Either way, you'll be giving your growing baby the ongoing protections and health benefits that only mother's milk can provide. And the benefits aren't only for your baby. The longer you breastfeed, the less likely you are to suffer from breast, uterine and ovarian cancers, heart disease, stroke and type 2 diabetes. In addition, one study showed a mother's body mass index is 1% lower for every six months that she breastfeeds. If this wasn't amazing enough, after six months is when breastfeeding really is the convenience option. It's all set up. You have nothing to remember or sterilise, and although your breasts may be back down to pretty near pre-pregnancy size, 
they're still producing as much milk as necessary with practised efficiency. And if you've returned to work or are planning too soon, you might be able to express milk so your baby and you can continue building up the long-term benefits. Fittingly, a little teaser to get you thinking. Did you know? Breast milk has a long life. Expressed breast milk retains its bacteria-killing properties long after leaving the body. In fact, they stop it going off. Tests show that breast milk remains safe for a healthy, full-term baby to drink for up to four hours at room temperature or three days in the fridge. Amazing! Unbelievable, isn't it? If you've listened to all the episodes so far, you know by now that breast milk has many more qualities than most people have ever imagined. In episode one, the changeable taste of breast milk was already a very brief topic. So let's go back to that. Your breast milk carries the flavour of whatever you eat or drink. Therefore, it can potentially give your baby a taste for healthy eating in later life. Studies show that breastfed babies of mums who eat fruit and vegetables regularly enjoy eating these foods more than babies of mums who don't. That might not seem a big deal now, but when you have a potentially fussy toddler on your hands, it will. And giving your child a taste for healthy eating could be another reason why breastfeeding could help cut obesity in adulthood, although the link is not yet proven. Your expressed breast milk can also be a nutritious component of your baby's first solid foods. Use it on cereals and in purees to give your little one the familiar flavour of your milk at mealtimes. If possible, use freshly expressed, not defrosted, milk and add to food just before serving to help preserve the live components and nutrients. From eating with a spoon for the first time, back to breastfeeding. Did you know? Breastfeeding calms and comforts. Breastfeeding has a soothing effect on your baby. During the whole of your baby's first year, breastfeeding before and during an injection will help him cope with the pain. And on average, breastfed babies cry less too. It's so nice to know that you can actively do something to make those first injections far nicer for you and your baby. So from looking at an immediate impact that breastfeeding can give to now talking about some of the long-term positives. Did you know? Breast milk grows your baby's thymus. Your breast milk helps build an organ in your baby's chest that is vital to his immune system throughout childhood and beyond. The thymus gland produces and supports special cells called T-cells, some of which fight infections, while others create antibodies or protect against autoimmune diseases. At four months old, babies who are exclusively breastfed have thymus glands more than twice the size of those who are fed formula. And if you're still breastfeeding at 10 months, your little one's thymus will be significantly larger than if you stopped at eight or nine months. Unlike any of his other organs, your child's thymus will start to slowly wither away when he reaches puberty but the protective T-cells it makes will last a lifetime. Remember the part about mammals and their brains from episode one? Let's dive in here once more. Incredibly, your baby's brain mass will almost double during his first six months of life. And by the time he is two, it will be 80% of its adult size. The human brain is 60% fat, So it makes sense that more of the fatty acids found in breast milk go into your baby's brain development. Your milk benefits your baby's brain in other ways too. White matter connects the regions of the brain and helps them communicate with each other. Research shows that exclusively breastfed babies have 20 to 30% more white matter in their brains than formula-fed babies. 
And this extra white matter is concentrated in the areas that govern language, reasoning, emotions, sociability and motor skills. Perhaps this is why studies around the world have found that babies who are exclusively breastfed are more likely to have higher IQs and do better at school than their formula-fed counterparts, even when socio-economic factors are taken into account. In the UK, children who were breastfed for six months or longer were found to achieve better exam results at age 16, while in Brazil, those who had breast milk for at least 12 months tended to be higher earners at the age of 30. Another small but important note regarding sustainability. Did you know? Breastfeeding is greener. Breastfeeding is easier on the environment compared to formula because it involves no packaging. In the US alone, 550 million formula containers are used each year. Breastfeeding does not require factory farming, no factory emissions or fossil fuels in processing, no transport fuels or emissions, and less water is used. Sustainability is a topic that concerns us all very much. The question of how long a child can be breastfed is a recurring topic. This is an assumption that we hope to get to the bottom of. Myth or fact? Breastfeeding past six months is just for babies in developing countries. It's a myth. Breastfeeding for an extended period does offer both protection against disease and extra nutrition in areas where water may be contaminated or food scarce. But that's only one part of the story. The amazing long-term benefits of mother's milk mean the World Health Organization's recommendation to breastfeed alongside complementary foods for up to two years and beyond applies to children in every country of the world. Our next packed post from the Did You Know section is also about breastfeeding duration, among other things. Did you know... Your risk of cancer goes down the longer you produce milk. Breastfeeding reduces your risk of breast cancer by 4.3% for every 12 months you produce milk. This effect is cumulative. For example, if you had three children and breastfed each of them for a year, your risk would lower by 12.9%. This may be because producing milk reduces your rate of ovulation. We know that women who start their periods young have a higher risk of breast cancer. Or it could even be that the process of lactation changes and restores the cells in the breast, helping it return to a natural state. But for the time being, the exact reason remains a mystery. And that's not all. Breastfeeding for more than a year reduces your risk of ovarian cancer by more than a third. Although, again, we're not certain why. But cancer is not the only important field of research when it comes to breastfeeding. Did you know? Breastfeeding reduces the risk of diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is on the rise worldwide. And the good news is that breastfeeding lowers your baby's risk of developing this disease later in life, as well as reducing your own risk by up to 32%. If you had gestational diabetes during pregnancy, you're more likely to develop type 2 diabetes later. But exclusive breastfeeding also lowers the risk in this situation. A recent study in Japan showed that exclusive or near-exclusive breastfeeding for at least six months greatly improved the abnormal glucose tolerance of mums who'd had gestational diabetes. Speaking of breast milk and disease, what does breast milk have to do with cancer prevention? Could breastfeeding reduce your baby's risk of lymphoma and leukaemia, two of the most common childhood cancers? An analysis of 18 different medical studies found children who were breastfed for at least six months as babies had a 19% lower risk of developing leukaemia than those who were breastfed for less than six months or not at all. 
and recent research into childhood lymphoma suggests that the longer babies are breastfed for, the lower their chance of developing the disease. So although more research needs to be done before we can give a definitive answer, the results so far look promising. Do the ingredients of your milk have the potential to fight cancer in other people too? Katarina Svanborg, Professor of Clinical Immunology at Lund University in Sweden, believes they do. She spent 20 years researching a natural compound called Hamlet. This has nothing to do with Shakespeare, but it is the abbreviation for the expression human alpha-lact albumin made lethal to tumour cells, made from breast milk. In laboratory experiments, this has killed more than 40 types of cancer cells, including those from brain, bladder and colon tumours. And unlike most other cancer treatments, it doesn't have the damaging side effects. Professor Svanborg is now moving on to bigger studies and trials. Could breast milk hold a cure? This is what is so exciting about the amazing study of breast milk. And just like that, we find ourselves at the end of the episode. Thank you for being with us. And something else to take away just for you. A little reminder. Whether you and your baby stop breastfeeding soon, around the thousand day mark, or keep feeding well beyond two years, you've given him something irreplaceable. Your breast milk has nourished him, protected him, built his body and his brain and set him up for a lifetime of better health. And we still don't even know every single benefit you've undoubtedly bestowed on him. It's been every day amazing and so have you. Thank you for listening. This was Your Amazing Milk, the evidence-based podcast about breast milk. From Medela, for you. The references to the studies used for this podcast can be found at medela.com forward slash ebook.